I've heard it called butterfly crawl, butterfly push. I call it butterfly crawl. Uh, this is for those of us that have a little bit of trouble moving from our butterfly. So we can get into it, but then when we need to move side to side or recover, we have a little bit of trouble or we have one side that actually feels really good and another side that it just feels like we're getting no power at all. I've got three exercises for you. If you stick around to the end, I might have a bonus fourth exercise for you. Uh, I'll show you how to fix that away from the rink so that you can execute properly on the ice. This is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. Let's get to it. Hey, great to see you again. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Maria. I'm an exercise physiologist and I specialize in off-ice training for hockey goalies. And today it's all about improving your butterfly crawl or evening out your butterfly crawl. The issue, there's a couple issues that limit your ability to move efficiently from your butterfly. One is strength in muscles around your hip and some of the deeper muscles in your hip. Pushing from a butterfly is a really interesting movement because you not only have to push out, you also have to push down. So we're gonna work on training the exact muscles that do that. But there's also a little core stabilization element to it. So if you're not balanced in your upper body, that's going to give you trouble too and suck power away from your legs. So I've got three super simple exercises for you today using pretty basic equipment. Uh, if you stick around to the end, I'll give you a bonus fourth exercise. Uh, and again, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe because I put out new videos about once every week with simple and effective goalie specific training drills. Let's get to drill number one. So I talked about how you need that strength to push laterally. You also need the stability in your pad that's staying down. So if I'm on the ice, I'm keeping this pad flared and I'm pushing, I need stability in this hip because if you know, for every force there's an equal and opposite reaction force, right? So if I push here and this hip, you know, doesn't stay stable and I lose my balance, I'm not going anywhere. So we're gonna start off by working on this lateral push in this leg but that's also gonna make us work some stability in this leg. This leg doesn't need to be in a flare position. That doesn't add to the exercise, so we're just gonna stay nice and tall. Before you ask, and feel free to drop any questions you have down in the comments. I'll answer every single one. You do not need a slide board like this to do it. Uh, I just, cause I have the turf here, the rest of the floor down here is cement. Uh, so I've just pulled my slide board over. I could do this on the turf by putting my foot in a plastic bag. There's a little um, kind of circular, they almost look like Frisbees, but they're called gliders. If you searched on Amazon, you know, workout glider, that it's made to, to slide on carpet or turf. If you have linoleum or hardwood or, you know, any smooth tile surface in your home, you can do that as well. So you don't need this. This is just what I use because I've got it. I've got a resistance band that has an ankle cuff. Again, you don't need to have this exact resistance band and a Velcro ankle cuff. You could use just, I'm coming back, don't worry. You know, you could just use a super band and put your foot in there. That's, that's fine. It does need to be anchored to something that isn't gonna <laughs> drag across the floor as you go. Some of you are a lot stronger than you think you are, that's for sure. So, I'm just putting this around. Do you ever feel like my videos could be like a drinking game and every time I say so, you would have to <laughs> take a drink? I feel like everyone would be bombed by the end. Sorry people who are underage, but I just feel like I say that word too much. I'm gonna try to fix it. <laughs> Somebody can count how many times and, and put it and I'll see if I can improve it from week to week. That would be great. I almost said it. I just have a hockey sock. Does it have to be a Montreal Canadiens hockey sock? No, it doesn't have to be a Montreal Canadiens hockey sock. It could be a face towel, a dish out. Don't use your like mom's face towel or whatever, like ask, but it can be anything. Just something that's going to slide. I'm up nice and tall. I wanna stay tall over this hip. This isn't a groin strengthening exercise, so I'm not 
you know, trying to strengthen my groin this way. I want to stay stable here as I push out to the side. And I'm going to work on getting a full push, but I do have that little bit of an angle. So I don't need to start here. I can start here. But if I come just so my foot's outside my hip, I have a little bit of an angle I'm going to push from, and then I extend straight out. And I stay nice and stable. So you can see my tempo. It's not crazy. I'm getting that full push. I'm pausing and then I'm controlling it back because my muscles, as I control that return, those muscles are also working. They're actually producing um, strength as they lengthen. So we want to work on that. I would do about 12 facing each direction using a medium resistance. Don't load this up too much. Don't try to make it hard for yourself. Go with a medium resistance so that some of those smaller, deeper muscles can share and do the work that they're supposed to do. If we go too heavy, like a lot of times when we're working on some stabilizers, the big muscles jump in and do all the work. Sometimes muscles hop in and compensate, and then it teaches us faulty movement patterns. That's exercise number one. You add that to your off-ice routine for two to three sets. Exercise number two. So we talked about how it's uh, pushing laterally, but you also have to put pressure down into the ice. You have to get that blade set and keep that blade contact. Well, how do we train that? It's pretty similar. I still have my Montreal, oh wait, geez, this one you have to do with Toronto Maple Leaf socks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hab socks still work. Uh, <laughs> I have a 10 pound plate. I've just put that on my sliding material. If you're a kid and you're doing this at home, do not just start sliding a plate across mom and dad's nice hardwood floor or whatever, scratching the daylights out of it. Ask permission first, make sure that it's cushioned. I'll take that off. This, so this way I'm gonna have to push down and out and I'm gonna have to push down and in as I come in and actually, when I, especially when I pull in, I actually really feel my groin working. So I like this for a nice functional adductor exercise or functional groin exercise for you. Notice again how my torso is staying nice and stable. I'm not you know, leaning away as I go out. I'm staying strong over this leg. I'm pushing out for about a count of two and I'm pulling up for about a count of two or three. And you'll really feel a lot going on in your lower leg when you do that. You do between eight to 12 on each side. I'm using a 10 pound plate. Now this board is quite smooth. It doesn't have too much friction. So that's a good weight on this board. If the board you're using or the surface you're using has more friction, you'll wanna go lighter. I wouldn't go too much heavier than 10 pounds to start with. It still isn't one of those ones that, oh, I want to do 225 <laughs> for that. You know, it, it, we never get to like a 45 pound plate. Sometimes if we're on a pretty smooth surface, we'd work our way up to 25, but it's not that kind of a strengthening exercise. And you know, from experience, when you're on the ice, it's not like, oh, I need more strength. It's really just getting that motor pattern and having enough strength where you need it. I mentioned the core stabilization part. What I don't want is, is you push this way for you to lose stability and kind of side bend in the direction you came from. I call it leaving your shoulders behind. So this is a way you can practice that off the ice. And I just have, uh, this is sort of a medium heavy resistance band. I want to give something for my legs to push against too so I get a little more strength in those pushing muscles but my hands have to stay right in front of me. If you want, you can rotate them a little bit the direction you're going, but I don't want it to be, I don't want you using your torso or your upper body to generate momentum. This knee is down, this foot is just outside my hips, so I'm in a good, uh, powerful pushing position. I'm going to stay low as I push, so I don't want to pop up, because that's not really the trajectory we want. I want to come across. And I'm just tapping this down. I'm not smashing my knee down, it's just tapping back down. If I was on a hard floor, the turf is fairly soft. If I was on a hard floor, I'd wear my knee pads for sure. Just, just so that it didn't get irritated. 
So I'm staying low. I'm keeping my hand right straight in line with my torso, keeping a nice strong core, teaching myself that habit that, hey, when I'm pushing here, this stays nice and solid. There's no side to side about it. So those are your three drills that help you get a better butterfly crawl. If you're watching this video and you're like, butterfly crawl, I don't even, I hardly even have a butterfly. My butterfly is so narrow, it's, you know, embarrassing. I have a solution for you there too. Uh, if you just head to your app store, type in butterfly challenge. It's a 14 day goalie specific mobility program I designed for you. It is free <laughs> and you can do it anywhere in less than 10 minutes a day. So that's that. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell. That means you get notifications of every time I upload a brand new video. Otherwise, I will catch you on the flip side. Oh wait, geez, you're, st you're still here. Okay, well, I did say I, I did say I would do a bonus. I know, I know what I said. You don't have to be snarky about it. I just didn't know you were still here. I'll give you the bonus, relax. The bonus is we're gonna combine them. So the first two exercises, we're gonna combine the lateral push with that vertical component. I have my band around my foot, the 10 pound plate on my socks de Montreal Canadien. <laughs> and sorry to everyone who actually speaks good French. And you know the pattern. Staying stable, getting a nice push. Do I have to hold my hands in front of me? No, you don't have to hold your hands in front of you. I like to do that because when I'm on the ice, I actually really like to pull them back here for some reason. So I feel like I can practice that pattern. Do you also notice how I'm staying tall in my hip? I'm not sitting down with my bum as I do that. I'm staying tall in my hip. I have a little bit of a forward projection. And that is your bonus drill. For this one, I would start with about eight repetitions facing each way. Thanks for sticking around. That was fantastic. I will catch you next time.